Turn on living room lights. It is turned on. Hey, what's up? Nasir Malik here. Today I have a special tutorial for you. It took me a while to get it done. This is my first tutorial on Google Home with ESP8266. I wanted to build a project where I don't need to open up router's firewall ports or to install proxy on my local machine to get this project working. I also wanted to use something more sophisticated than IFTTT. So let's look at what we need for this project. We're going to need USB 2 TTL programmer board, ESP8266 version 12. You can use any version with it. Uh, for all the version, it's the same process. Mini USB cables, a mechanical relay, Google Home, And the total cost of this project is based on the things we need only for this project. Uh, some of the items are reusable for other projects, so we're not going to include it in this price. So total cost of this project is $3.15. If you remove the Google Home and the programmer and the cable, because those are the items that you use it for every project. To, um, for this project only you need the ESP board and the mechanical relay. So let me explain first the typical way of setting this up and what the issues are. So if you look at the um, a typical setup uh, basically uh, you will be behind the firewall and this is a router and you're behind the firewall and when you give a command to Google Home, Google Home goes out to the cloud to process it and then it goes to uh, any service like IFTTT or w what you have and then it tries to come back um, over the uh, internet and talk, try to talk to your device. The problem is that the connection they get initiated from inside the firewall, um, they can open up a, a port automatically and talk to the services on the internet. But when um, you want something um, from the internet some services to talk to you behind the firewall the firewall actually blocks it so let's look at the process how uh, this works so the first thing you do you give a command to Google Home and from there um, it actually goes through your router firewall and since it's uh, uh, originating from the inside um, the firewall it's gonna let it through and it goes to the Google um, API and talks to your agent that you created there. And from there, it sends the command to IFTTT or other um, services that you may use to process your request. And, in, and from there, it actually comes back and try to process, uh, send that command to your uh, IoT device. The problem here is that uh, this piece won't work uh, until you open up uh, a port on your firewall and, uh, and that's the only way you can get uh, uh, let the traffic through so once you open that port up it's gonna go through and talk to your device um, it could be a um, ESP um, 8266 or Raspberry Pi or whatever you have and then th that uh, um, uh, board will uh, process your command and then it will send it to your attached device and then turn it on and off and then it would basically you know once it completes it it'll send back uh, the message to the service saying hey I completed the action and then um, in turn that service will send it to the Google AI um, API.ai uh, and uh, tell it hey uh, this quest was completed and in return um, it will go back and, and if there's a, a message sent back to the Google Home, it will send it. Um, and since, uh, the original, since the original request was originated inside the firewall, so it's, it happens in very quickly in, in a second or two. And since the connection is still there and it's waiting uh, for a response, uh, in this time it's going to just let it through because it's originated. There's a connection there. And that's done. So that's a typical uh, approach. I mean, you, there are other ways you could do uh, set up reverse proxies and stuff, uh, use ngrok or some other services. The problem is uh, I couldn't find anything that was decent. Uh, you have to pay for some other services. 
and ngrok you can't really run it on on the esp board because it doesn't have uh, an os and uh, on a raspberry pi i can run something like ngrok you know for reverse proxy uh, that would resolve the problem but the problem with this board is uh, it's pretty small and doesn't run os and there's not much you can do there's not much flexibility so um so for this project we're not going to use the if triple t we're going to replace it with our own solution so um so we're not going to use this uh, we're going to go ahead and roll over solution and i'm going to show you what uh, i mean by that so let's look at uh, what i'm uh, proposing so this is my approach so first thing i wanted to do is to eliminate the having uh, manually going into um, to the router and opening up a port or a firewall uh, because I, a lot of the um, folks out there like me they don't have that flexibility because my router is locked down by my service provider or ISP so I don't have any flexibility to opening up a port so that uh, um, is a problem and also a lot of folks you know um, uh, they don't know how to log into their router and how to set up a port and it's pretty tedious um, it's as simple, it's not that hard, but the problem is it's a headache, you know, for, for the setting it up and do all that stuff. You want something that, you know, it, you're going to set up multiple devices and you should be able to do it without, you know, uh, opening up a port in your router. Let me explain how it works. I have a, a WebSocket client installed on the ESP8266. I have an um, app installed on Heroku um, that is uh, uh, Windows Socket. Uh, um, application with HTTP supported. So very first thing that happens is that a Windows Socket client is installed on the ESP uh, board and the client establishes a connection uh, talking to the application that is deployed in Heroku and it actually maintains that communication uh, as long as it's um, uh, turned on and uh, um, there is no traffic once it connects does the handshake there's no traffic the the connection is idle so there is no um, you know um, data going over uh, all the times only time you're gonna see the data when the request comes through uh, from the Google mm, home so this connection uh, stays active it's idle it is connected but it stays active so um, so that connection is there now so since it's originated um, uh, from inside the firewall so now Haruko app can talk to it anytime it wants uh, because that uh, after handshake it stays active so next thing what happen is uh, when you give a command to Google Home so Google Home basically uh, takes that request and since it's originating from inside the firewall it's gonna send that through and a port will automatically open into the Google API.ai and that's where you have your agent so you'll be creating an agent um, to do uh, control your commands and stuff. So we're going to set that up in this tutorial. So the Google API.ai processes this request um, using Google Actions. Then it sends a JSON a message to Haruko app and app process that message and forwards it on the existing open connection between the device and, uh, and the Haruko. So it actually is going to send it and it's going to go over and since uh, it is established connection from inside the firewall so you don't need to open a firewall port here so it goes back and it actually goes to the ESP board and ESP sends that command to the attached device and once that um, and then it sends the response back uh, to Haruko and say on the same uh, channel and it says hey I turn on the device so once Haruko uh, receives that message it actually sends it back to the api.ai and then api.ai takes that response and it sends it back to the google home in case if it needs to um you know uh, announce it uh, or do whatever it needs to do so this is a pretty uh, simple setup uh, it, it looks a little bit difficult but it's not at all i have everything set up for you uh, Heroku app um, deployment is like a single click you need to make sure you register and if you're not it will ask you to register also you need to be uh, registered on a uh, api.ai if you're not registered you can log in with your Google account if you have an email account it will let you log in with that 
I don't uh, go into details creating every step because I think uh, it it's a lot of information. It's it's information overload. Uh, I know the way I learn it, I like to play around with things and then start to learn that way. Uh, so I set these things up for you guys so you guys can uh, set it up and then start playing around with them and then learn that way instead of showing you everything step by step and now it takes hours and hours uh, uh, to set up the projects and go through it and it's boring. So I wanted to make sure that my tutorials are very straightforward and to the point where you can quickly get up and running and then you can go ahead and explore and start learning your own. So here are some of the steps. They're not in any order, but these are some of the things we'll be doing in this uh, um, uh, tutorial. So you would need to install Arduino IDE. Um, for that, you need to watch tutorial one because I'm not gonna um, do it for every tutorial. Um, um, install uh, ESP8266 required libraries in Arduino IDE. Uh, you can watch the tutorial one for that. Then we're going to go ahead and create an agent with API.ai um, and a Google function. Um, then we're going to connect FTDI and ESP on the breadboard. Then we're going to deploy the code to Heroku website from GitHub. Then we're going to flash the ESP board with the program. Then we're going to connect our relay to the ESP board and then we're going to give commands to the Google Home and control our devices. To connect the uh, ESP board to um, uh, your uh, programmer is very easy. I covered that in the previous tutorial but I'm going to go ahead and, and do that again in this tutorial to make it easier. So the first thing is the your RX pin uh, goes into your TX pin on your ESP board and a TX pin from your programmer to go to RX pin on your um, um, ESP board. Next you will connect EN and VCC uh, pins on ESP board to 3.3 volt on the programmer. And next what you would do is you connect your GPIO 15 and a ground pin which is pin 15 and 16 uh, to the ground pin on the programmer and before you power up your ESP board you need to make sure you ground the GPIO 0 um, and then once it's uh, powered up you can um, unground it so that's the uh, very simple uh, setup for this um, ne next I'm going to show you how it is hooked up on the board itself so if you look at it um, pretty easy um, the on the board this is the jig I created you can um, uh, guys let me know if you want to see how to create the jig um, I can uh, show you it's pretty easy uh, the on the board the the left top pin is pin 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then 9 so um, so basically I have the pin um, 3 and pin 8 uh, hardwired underneath the board and also um, uh, pin 15 and pin 16 hardware so you need to make sure you connect either of these pins to the um, um, positive 3.3 um, volts and uh, these two to the negative of the ground mm, and the pin 22 and pin 21 they go to the programmer board um, XT to RX and the RX to XT and on, on relay um, uh, it is still it's a 5 volt but it's still if you have enough uh, juice you can control it um, through the um, uh, existing um, the programming board uh, uh, but sometimes MC doesn't work correctly so once I program it I switch the power source to a, a, a little bit more juice so it can still work um, it can work off the 3.3 volts from the same power supply so uh, on relay, we're gonna take the negative um, pin and we're gonna connect it to ground. We're gonna take positive and connect it to the positive 3.3 volts or five volts, whatever. Uh, make sure if you're using five volts, uh, the ESP um, board only runs on 3.3 volts. If you try to run it uh, on a five volts, either you will uh, fry it and it'll be very unstable. It won't work. I tried it and it didn't work. 
Um, and then you take the third wire, which is signal, it goes to the GPIO 16 in my case. And if you're using different GPIO or different board, you make sure you change it on your code. And I'll show you that. Uh, so this is a pretty simple setup. So what do you need to do is the very first thing you go into this um, um, GitHub project that I have um, and you need to click um, download, download zip. It's going to download the zip file and um, you just basically um, unzip it. So all these files are here um, that you're going to need for this project. So very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and deploy the Heroku app. So I'm going to come down here on my project on GitHub and I'm going to click this button. And uh, I, th I think I was already logged into Heroku, so um, it probably won't ask me for the login. So if if you probably would see a different screen uh, uh, if you're not registered, if you register or in logged in already before, uh, it's gonna show you this page. So in this page, it's gonna ask you to name your app. So I'm going to name it ESP um, IoT, and then select your region, and I'm going to say deploy. <clears throat> and it's going to start deploying my application and over here you can see uh, it's showing you the progress of um, uh, installing the the app and we're going to wait for it to complete and you can see it's very simple it's a one click deployment you don't need to worry about anything it's all set up for you so once it's deployed, um, I can go and look at the log and, and, and click on the log and I can afterwards I can see it and it shows me all the stuff it did. But the end, what it does is shows you the URL for that app. And this is very important. And click on it and you need to copy this URL where it got uh, deployed. Usually it's your project name dot app.com because that's what you're going to need to put into your um, API agent and also into the uh, your um, Windows socket client for your ESP board. So you need to copy that, note it somewhere. So we're gonna need it once we set up that. So next what you need to do is go ahead and open up your um, uh, this uh, um, uh, file um, in the, um, open up this file in Arduino IDE uh, and I already opened it up. It looks like this. Only thing you need to change is here is that you uh, put in your SSID um, name here, um, your router's uh, password. Mm, as I um, told you on the Heroku itself, you need to take this name right there. You could copy it and you need to paste that here like that. And after that, you need to go ahead and reset your board and flash um, this. That's all you need. So you only need to modify these three lines for the client to work. Okay, so to um, connect your um, your programmer with your uh, ESP, basically there are four wires. Um, the first wire is ground, the second one, um, you skip the second one, and then the third one is 3.3 uh, volt positive, 3.3 volt positive, and the fourth one is TX and then RX. So you'll put the um, RX pin here. This is TX pin. So RX goes to TX and then TX goes to RX. So white one is, okay. So I'll put the brown, I think that's what it is. And the white one goes into, so like that. So basically, so this is the uh, white one is the RX that is going to the TX pin, which is pin 22 on the board, first one. And then this is the TX and that is going to the um, RX pin right there. And then from the other hand, I already put this to the ground, um, the positive 3.3 volts and uh, this uh, last one is grounded. So I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna take the black one and put it into the ground. That supplies the voltage and this two. Three points, so like this, very simple setup. So this is to flash, this is to flash the um, 
the ESP board. Very simple setup. And I already mentioned that um, the third pin, and this is already on the bottom, hardwired, and also the um, uh, last pin and uh, next pin is our hardwire. Uh, before I power it up, I'm going to take the GPIO zero and the ground and short them like this before I power up and then it'll be in a flash mode. So okay, I put in my um, SSID name and the password and my application name as you and I'm going to go ahead and I already set it, put it in a flash mode. So I'm going to go ahead and flash it. We're going to let it flash. Upload the program to the ESP board. So what I usually do is while it's uh, comp compiling and after when it's going to start uploading the code, uh, I open up my serial uh, monitor to see what's going on. So once it boots up, it gives me all the information I need to take a look at um, just for debugging purposes. But if you already know your software works, you really don't need to do that. So once it starts uploading the code, you can see the light blinking on both of the boards. Yeah, see, now you should see the lights blinking. You can see the blue light blinking here and also the red light blinking over there and that means it's flashing right now. And once it's 100% complete on the screen, um, you should start seeing in a few seconds um, the boot up. And sometime um, it depends on how much uh, uh, sometime you see error on the board because it doesn't have enough um, power so it ESP board is very sensitive it throws errors and stuff so if you have a simple program it's fine um, but sometime it throws errors and you like right now you can see that it threw an error so what I usually do is um, I take a, um, external power source is 3.3 volt I just plug that in there mm, and then if you restart it you should you should see as soon as you restart it now you can see the error in one way I don't know why it does that sometimes but um, this is one way of uh, getting it, even though everything is hooked up. So you can see, you can you should see a similar um, output. Uh, when finally, I mean, once it's connected and everything, you can see the IP address of your um, uh, ESP board, and um, you you need to wait until it says yeah uh, right here. So this is who you need to get. Uh, once you get this connected, got data, event OK, command is not recognized, and um, uh, s sending response back. So if you get this, that means you're good, you're connected to the uh, Heroku app, and you're good to go. So we're done here on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it down uh, here so I know I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull the uh, programmer board off. I'm going to unplug it and connect the relay so we can control the relay. And the relay is pretty simple. It's got three wires, negative, positive, and a signal. So I'm going to just go ahead and take the, uh, the brown one. So brown one is the uh, negative. Um, the red one is the positive and the orange one is the signal so I'm just going to simply connect them here wherever you want to connect them and then I'm using the GPIO um, 16 or um, so this is the pin 4 from the top so if you count it 1 2 3 4 there we go and it's pretty simple and keep it like that and I'm gonna try the juice here and then
and you can give it like you know 10 seconds or so or um, what now to make sure that it gets connected so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to the api.ai and uh, create an agent so once you get there um, first thing you would need to do is actually sign up so here you have option uh, two options either you sign up with your Google um, if you have an email account or any Google account you can sign up clicking here or um, if you already have an account access you can just click here uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say sign up and it's gonna give me um, a multi, you know a, uh, a list of accounts if you have multiple accounts here uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a different account um, since uh, under my account is already set up so I'm gonna use a different account so um so in my account I already have it set up so I'm not going to use that I'm gonna use a different account um, so I can show you how to uh, sign up and, and get it started from scratch so I'm gonna click on a different account and it's gonna ask me for the password and uh, well it did ask me for the password and I, I entered it and now um, I'm gonna just click here allow once I click here it's gonna go ahead and take my Gmail account and connect it to the API.ai here I'm gonna say accept and voila I'm in so to get started what I'm going to do is first uh, create an agent uh, empty agent so I'm gonna click here and it's going to say you say uh, authorize allow so now you have the permissions so the agent I'm going to give it a name uh, matrix dash AI I know I want to feel like Neo <laughs> controlling things dodging bullets um, so it um, so you can't put uh, spaces in the project um, agent name so you have to have um, you know um, dashes underscore whatever and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm going to just uh, uh, type in some description I I'm going to save it So it's going to take a little bit time first um, so it's going to save it so when it's done now you're going to see this window right here um, so before we do anything else what we need to do is to um, import instead of having you create this manually mm, I, uh, um, I created a zip file that you can import from and uh, this way you don't have to go through and set it up but I'm, I'm just to, and I will go through step by step to, just to give you high level information what it is uh, because I want you to um, learn uh, once start you know getting it set up and start playing with it and then you can start learning and showing you how it is easy it is to set it up um, because if I go through it step by step everything it takes long time uh, uh, and it probably span you know, multiple tutorials and this kind of gets boring so uh, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, show you how to import that uh, zip file into it so it will um, preload all the stuff you need here um, so let me find that and then I'll come back so for you to import um, this agent um, you need to go to the um, um, the, this project where you download it and you need to grab the zip file in my case um, this is the project that I downloaded unzipped so I can um, uh, I need to go and, and select this um, uh, zip file to import it into the agent you can click on the settings and from there you can go into this uh, menu export import and then from there you can say import from zip file you can click here and then either you can drag and drop um, a file here or you can just select it so I'm going to do is put in the path and I'm gonna go and select this uh, matrix-ai.zip and so once I open it 
mm, I can uh, and this is uh, already selected now and I one um, thing is very uh, pretty good they did is that you know you you um, for deleting it or importing it uh, they make you actually type into a text box so uh, you know you can't accidentally overwrite or delete something so it's pretty nice you know one more thing I want to talk about is uh, you know how um, I, both um, the Google uh, Google uh, platform for the IOT stuff and Alexa or Amazon uh, platform um, I really love both you know I mean they have their pros and cons and um, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna be doing another uh, uh, similar tutorial on the um, Alexa also Mm, but this is for the Google because I haven't done any tutorials at all on this and they're a little bit different the way they are uh, I would say the um, the Alexa to set up stuff for Amazon Alexa um, and uh, on uh, Google uh, home and uh, they're a little bit different I would say the um, Alexa is user-friendly or at least uh, you know DIY hacking stuff and all that stuff um, it's pretty easy you know especially setting up devices you can give it a command to discover devices on your network and it broadcasts and finds those devices and then uh, you can control them with your command so they're not a special setup um, the Google doesn't have um, uh, that uh, or at least uh, I know of that the way that I uh, feel like you know it should be pretty easy I mean if you plug in, in a device into your house and you program it to be connected to your network then you should be able to do it without going through uh, extra steps so and on on the other hand I think you know um, the Google platform is uh, developer friendly uh, I, I don't know this is my opinion I feel that way you know so um, you know um, share your thoughts I and mean, what do you guys think uh, maybe you know you guys uh, um, have few tricks up your sleeve that you guys can share um, so okay so go ahead and so when, what we did is we just imported the file and uh, if you now you go back and look at the intents before you had it empty but now this time it added uh, control intent here so intent basically is is a command or something you want to do or something uh, you know um, you want to maybe control a thing turn on or off a thing or or getting an information on the internet or getting a status uh, of something like you know I'm, I'm uh, I'm going to be using this uh, to set up my garage door opener where I can uh, open up a garage, close a garage door, or want to check the status of a garage door. So on and off, then it doesn't cut it. I mean, I, I and I want to do is uh, hey, when I say you know uh, you know close the garage door and um, it should close it, and it, and if it is already closed, it should tell me it's already closed. If I want to open the garage door. Uh, I would say you know hey open the garage door it should open it if it's closed but if it is already open it should just respond saying yes it is open and then it should have a follow-up response hey do you want to close it so I would say yes or no so those kind of things I want to do and I want to be able to do it using Google Home and Alexa uh, so here if you see my intents basically uh, are you know um, I'm gonna delete this one I'm not gonna use that for now so I'm just gonna leave three in here there are three intents here I have what well, they turn on living room lights turn off living room lights and then what is the uh, state of the living room lights uh, you can use whatever word you want so these are the intents that um, um, I have created so before you create these intents you need to make sure you have the entities set up so what are the entities entities are basically uh, it could be a state of uh, um, uh, uh, device or it could be a name of the area like living room bedroom and stuff and it could be the name of the uh, actual uh, uh, attached device that you want to turn on and off so if you look at it uh, I have uh, created uh, three entities here one, uh, one entity is uh, a device so in the device uh, and you can name whatever you want here um, lights fan TV door I'm gonna add like PlayStation um, Xbox I'm gonna add um, uh, um, all different things to do in here and especially I'm working on a project where I want to add um, a PlayStation in there and I want to give it a command uh, hey I want to play PlayStation 4 on the surround sound and it should turn on my PlayStation my TV and my receiver on and um, it should be able to play it or if I want to say hey I want to um, play PlayStation on a TV so you should not turn on my 
um, uh, surround sound. You should just turn on a PlayStation and TV, and it should switch the inputs. So um, all all those projects are in the process, but I'm simply you know going one by one, making sure we get all this stuff done. So these are the um, so entities basically um, you set up. So I have another uh, category for entities. It's, it's a location. So it could be kitchen, room, uh, kitchen, living room, bed. Uh, you can put in additional if you want. And the state is turn on and off in the state. So now, um, so this is it. I mean, you're not gonna have to do anything here. Only thing you need to do here is to go to fulfillment, and you can enable um, that webhook. And the URL, you remember the one that we got from Haruko? We need to put that URL here. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna grab that URL. Uh, if I can just go, okay, on the setting. So you can um, be on the setting and you need to grab uh, this URL <clears throat> and you need to put it here. And you need to save it. So this actually tells it, once you send a command from Google Home, it's gonna go to the API.ai API and it's gonna take that command, process it, and send that command to the Heroku app and which is gonna in turn uh, communicate it with the ESP board and then turn things on and off. So this is what you go into fulfillment, webhook, and this is what you put in your um, URL for the Haruko app. Now you go back and if you click on control uh, you're going to see let me delete this because I don't need that for now so we just need three intents. So if you see this fulfillment make sure this webhook the webhook checkbox is checked. <clears throat> and uh, from there um, next step you need to do is go to integration and here, um, actions on Google, you need this. Um, without it, it won't work. So you click in here. Um, it's going to say create an action on Google projects. Mm. So this is, is telling you this is your project ID. So I'm going to say um, you create the project. It's gonna take me to the Google actions. And it's gonna um, pre-fill the um, uh, project name in there in the country. You can simply click here, import project, and it's gonna import your project. So next, what I need to do is put in the uh, app info. So I'm gonna add app information here. So I'm gonna give it a name, AI. So here on this box, you need to use your mic to um, uh, pronounce whatever name you want to uh, give uh, it's important to use your mic because if you type it in you don't know if uh, um, um, Google Home is able to process the pronunciation and, and give you your agent to work with so um, usually whatever and it's gonna tell you when you type it in it's gonna tell you if that name is available or not so um, I'm not sure what name I'm gonna use let me think <laughs> Because I already used the Matrix um, AI, so it's not going to let me choose it. So guys, I'm back. I have to go and try out a few different names. And I did. So I, I um, um, turn, click on this mic, and it starts spinning. And I spoke Jarvis AI, and it did um, uh, take in this name. So I'm going to try it again so you guys can see it. Jarvis AI. So you need to speak the name. So if it could, um, um, whatever it puts it in, you can just accept that. So, so next, um, you can select whatever um, the voice you want Google Home to use once it is, uh, once it initiates your um, agent. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a female voice, and um, this is just a. Uh, description here you can put whatever you want and I think some of these fields are not mandatory so you can just skip over if I'm not gonna go ahead mm. 
So we're gonna say, uh, so to, in work of our agent, um, this is what we are uh, going to um, say. So we're gonna say, okay, Google, and then we're gonna say, talk to Jarvis AI, and it's gonna say, okay, it's gonna bring in Jarvis online, and then we can communicate with Jarvis agent. Uh, you can add more invocations in here. Uh, for now, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna leave, just leave that there. Um, and then you can select the category. Um, I'm gonna say home control. And uh, I'm not sure what, why is it not turning this on? Okay, yeah, um, also here too. So once um, you fill in all the information, it's gonna give you next button, you can click here. And here it requires you to select a couple of pictures and stuff and, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to put these pictures there. I got a little small picture here. I'm gonna see if I can put that one there. It doesn't really matter. All right, okay. this guy looking pretty, looking handsome. Okay, so I'm gonna put this uh, picture here, and um, it's gonna let me upload. I need to find one bigger picture. Let me find one, and then I'll we'll put one here. Okay, um, I I found some. I found some of my kids, um, they play roadblocks, so they got some picture here, I can use that one. Okay, so, there we go. Hopefully that takes it. Oh, there you go. It's gonna select that. Okay, that's done, we're gonna click next. Testing instructions, you can put in whatever you need in here. <clears throat> contact information so I'm just gonna put it an email I can put in mine test at test.com next so here um they are going to ask you to put in some i'm not sure i guess you guys can put whatever you want it doesn't have to be correct uh, for me i'm just gonna put in this information So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and it's going to take a few seconds to create this project for me. So the API.ai is just not intended for the Google Home. It's actually a product that is created so it could work with other um, services and stuff and it can also talk to Alexa and stuff. So it's a platform to build your own custom agents and stuff and it's not limited to just Google products. Okay, so we try to save it. Um, so it giving us an error that your pronunciation and um, your, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that here also and hopefully this works. Maybe <clears throat> I mistyped, uh, yeah, I mistyped. So um, it uh, gave me an error that my pronunciation and uh, the command uh, are different so I'm gonna go ahead and save it again so it is saved now we go back to the api.ai click on the Google actions turn it on and um, say authorize allow and we can click on update <clears throat> and then we can uh, click on visit and we can click on test so here are a couple of ways you can test it you can um, use the the simulator to test it so as you can see um, I got my Google Home set up here um, also you need to make sure the whatever account you're using to set up this agent you log into the same account using Google Home 
if the Google Home and Agents are not on the same account, they won't work. So I also have my um, the ESP board, uh, ESP board flashed, and uh, relay set up. So right now, uh, I'm going to show you how to use the um, actions on Google Simulator to turn this on and off, and then eventually we will go ahead and uh, uh, do the same thing through uh, Google Home. So test it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and invoke my agent here, and it's going to give me. Okay, let's get the test version of Jarvis AI. Hi, Neo. How may I help you? Yeah, so I feel like Neo, and I can't dodge the bullets, but at least I can control my devices. So I'm going to go ahead, give it a command to turn on um, the uh, lights and see if the relay comes on. It so you can see. On. Um, I gave it a command, it came back on. So now I'm going to tell it to turn it off. And it did. So it, it's pretty uh, fast, it's fair. Um, so um, let's try it one more time, uh, see if we can uh, turn it on and off. Mm, so I'm going to do is turn it on, lights. And it, on. it is turned on. And if I do turn it off, it went off. It off. And um, so if I want to ask the status of, I can do the other um, intent. We can check the uh, status also. <clears throat> it is turned off. So if I turn it back on, um, and I'm pretty bad with the writing, so I just try to copy paste it. So you see it is on. So now if I go back and, and ask the status of it again, um, so or state of it again, it's going to tell me. It is turned on. Turned on. So it's pretty good. I mean, it's not limited to just uh, turning on and off things, but you can uh, do other things. And I mean, this is just a, a tip of the iceberg. I mean, if you do... Um, you can engage in full conversation, you know, build your things with the, uh, do follow up intents and all that stuff. We'll cover that uh, stuff in uh, uh, later tutorials, but let's uh, go ahead and test it on Google Home and, um, and then we'll uh, talk about rest of stuff. So I'm gonna tell uh, Google Home to turn on the lights. So I'm gonna first invoke our agent. So the, our agent's invocation is uh, Jarvis AI. So I'm gonna ask it to invoke it. So this is how you do it. Okay, Google, talk to the Jarvis AI. Okay, getting the test version of Jarvis AI. Hi, Neo, how may I help you? Turn on living room lights. It is turned on. Turn off living room lights. It is turned off. I don't know if you guys can see this. I didn't get that. Okay, Google, talk to Jarvis AI. All right, let's get the test version of Jarvis AI. Hi, Neo, how may I help you? Turn on living room lights. It is turned on. What is the state of living room lights? It is turned on. Turn off living room lights. It is turned off. What is the, what is the state of living room lights? It is turned off. Okay, Google, stop. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me your feedback. That helps me to improve my videos. Till next time, bye.